welcome everybody and welcome back. It's super early today. We are starting around 5.40 or something. So it's very early. Matty is still lying in bed because he was mud crabbing the whole last night. So he will have some extra minute of sleep. I am already bright and up early as always because I am way too excited about today. It's gonna be a full on day. But first let me fly the drone. Let me show you where did we just wake up and then I'm gonna make coffees and then we will start the day. Right now we are in Roebuck Bay where the vibrant red dirt meets the milky blue water with the green mangrove trees in the middle. It's absolutely stunning view. It's a home to many mud crabs as well as birds. So you just get this natural sounds all around you. It's super peaceful. If you come here, make sure to plant it on a high tide so you get all the milky blue water covering the mangrove trees. is this place especially from the bird's eyes view this is the best thing about drone that you just get the new perspective of places and this place is just so beautiful well let's give coffee to the sleepy head in the car look at this coffee window good morning Whoa, i cannot <laughs> wake up Aww. maybe this will help you are you holding it yeah it incredible <laughs> thank you <laughs> We are changing the plants a little bit because the sand flies here are hectic. So we're gonna pack the car and we will drive somewhere else without sand flies and that's where I will cook our breakfast. <laughs> we just spotted a blue tongue lizard crossing the road. You just gotta be careful when driving, not to run them over. Look at him. You go, buddy. I think we found ourselves a pretty epic spot to have a breakfast at. Which cafe has this view? Nowhere. What do you think about this spot for breakfast? Absolutely bloody beautiful. Good job driving here. Look at this, look at the water. I know, I was just saying there is no cafe in the world with this view. Let's cook breakfast. Matty is going for a swim and I do not blame him because it starts to getting really hot. I am going to make the breakfast and then I'm gonna join him as well. So, what I'm gonna cook today is banana pancakes there is no flour no dairy no sugar so what i need is for two people i'm using two bananas four eggs and then i have ground nutmeg vanilla essence cinnamon shredded coconut and coconut oil the first thing is i'm gonna mash the banana so i'm gonna add cinnamon as you can see, I'm adding a lot of cinnamon. I love the taste. It's healthy for you and it gives it a sweet taste as well. A little bit of a nutmeg. And then I like to add a little bit of a vanilla extract. And then I'm just gonna mash it. If you have a blender, you can just chuck the banana and all the spices into a blender and just blend it, which is easier and quicker. But obviously in a car, I don't have a blender and this fork just does the job as well. This is perfect. Now I'm gonna add two eggs per person, so I'm adding four eggs. I have the banana and eggs in a bowl, so I'm just gonna mix it together. And this is the mixture. If you don't like coconut, you can just leave it this way. And this is how it looks like. That's the final dough. I'm just gonna put it on a pan with coconut oil and make pancakes and it's gonna be delicious and healthy and super quick as you can see. So first pancakes are on the pan. I usually fit three pancakes on one pan and today's kitchen views 
priceless. You just don't even mind to be cooking or doing dishes when you are on a place like this. The wind picked up a little bit, so I put a plastic cover to protect it from the ocean side. And I think the first pancakes are ready. So we can take them off. Aren't they looking pretty delicious? <laughs> Still more to do, so let's cook up all. And these are the pancakes ready like this. I reckon they look amazing. They smell even better. I wish you guys can smell it. And I'm just defrosting some blueberries, mango and dragon fruit to top it off. And the breakfast is ready like this. It's full of protein with the eggs and I sprinkle it with hemp seed for some extra protein so it will fill you up for a long time. The banana and cinnamon gives it the sweet taste so you don't need any sugar and for some extra omega-3 I sprinkle it with chaya seed as well. And that's it guys, that's my top go recipe for breakfast in the car. If you have any really good camping recipes, put them please in the comments below. I'm always looking for more inspiration. Come on, the breakfast is served. Coming! Are you hungry? Oh, this place is incredible. So when, the, when that tide picks up, yeah. we're going fishing. Oh yeah? It's so good. With a boat or just from the land? No, with the boat, I'm going to put the boat in here. Let's do this. Look at this breakfast. Hey. So good, eh? Right? Like it? Mmm. <laughs> Delicious as always. I was saying that it's our probably the most common breakfast, this or eggs. It's like three times a week, eh? Hey? Going on a boat? Or we need to wait, hey, for the tide. Mm. Should we go for a swim first? As soon as that tide picks up, boat's in the water here. Yeah. Are we gonna go for a swim now? Yeah, I need water. I'm dying. <laughs> back from the dip in the ocean beautiful refreshing water i'm just gonna quickly clean the dishes now and then we are gonna get back into the car hit the road and i will show you more stunning places here in broom so yeah we have a i usually just use bucket with the water or to be honest most of the time i'm doing it in the ocean but because there are crocodiles i'm not gonna risk it and i have a water in the bucket we have an ecological uh, dishwashing liquid so I'm just gonna quickly wash it off and let's go. So this was our morning in Bar Creek. It's probably 30 minutes away from a Willy Creek, which is quite a touristic spot here. You won't find anyone around. You probably need four wheel drive though, but you will be rewarded by untouched white sandy beach, beautiful ocean next to you and it's an amazing free camping spot so I can imagine spending the night and waking up would be pretty epic so now we are on the way to a new spot ready always <laughs> spot number three for today are beautiful rock pools which are visible and accessible only on low tide I would say that Broom in general is about chasing tides majority of the places here are good on high tide this one is probably the only one which is good to see on low tide. So fingers crossed the tide is low enough for us to see it and for us to have a swim because it's bloody hot. It's around 37 or 38 degrees. I'm melting and I am so excited to have a swim in those beautiful rock pools. We are in Coconut Wells and all the beach and reef is now exposed and all the holes in it are filled with milky blue water. So the nature just created those beautiful rock pools. I cannot wait to go for a swim or swim for a little dip, little bath. I'm gonna take you with me and as well I'm gonna fly the drone because I think only from the bird's eyes perspective you can really appreciate how does it look like right now. Okay, I've got my shoes because I believe that the reef is gonna be sharp and Mary, are you coming? Five minutes, I'll meet you there. Okay, so Mary is gonna join me later and I'm gonna go. How amazing is this combination of the white rock, the water and the ocean is back there. Oh, cool. It's like 
can make sure a little bar stuff, hey. Come in with me. <laughs> So right now I am much closer to the beach where there are those holes in the reef and it's so much easier to walk on. Back there it was the quite high sharp reef. So this is much easier to walk on and I'm gonna try to find some little hole, a little pool where I can sit in and chill and see if Matty will join me. He is not a big fan of places which are made to touristic attractions. So this is like a famous place on the map he would much rather find his own treasures in the nature which I'm all about as well it obviously feels so much better when you discover unexpectedly something beautiful in the nature but whilst we are in Broome we know about this play I may as well just go and see it as well and show it to you guys and I think there is one pool which is just perfect for me to chill at It has a layer of hot water on the top from the sun and the bottom is cold. It's the best feeling. And the views. I'm gonna bring you into my private bathtub. How good is this joint? <laughs> Look, the pool I found for us. Yeah, straight in. <laughs> so hot out here. Oh, how good. I know. There's yeah, some bush tucker. Oh, is it a cucumber? Sea cucumber. <laughs> If you don't know what that is, that there is a sea cucumber. You can actually eat them, it's a Chinese delicacy. You cut the guts out, you dry it out, you salt it, and you can eat them up. Interesting little creatures, hey? We'll let this one just chew out on his own little rock pool, but... You wanna eat one? I don't know, it looks a little bit like a pool. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is so nice. I know. Thanks for joining me. This was so much fun. I highly, highly recommend coming to Coconut Wells when you are around Broome. <laughs> Look at him. What are you doing in there? <laughs> highly recommend coming to Coconut Wells if you are around Broome for a low tide. <laughs> you see, he enjoyed it as well. Look how good mood he is at. I'm always in a bloody good mood. How did you like those private pools? If you want to watch a really good YouTube channel, type in Field Days. It is a bloody good channel, Look mate. at this self-promo! Get out of here! <laughs> Loved it! Loved rock pools! And now we are off to the next spot, which is the last spot for today, and that's our sunset plans. And I am... You're speechless! <laughs> I am way too excited. I can't contain my excitement. That's so nice. very excited. I'm just gonna dry my hair, get into the car, and we are going! And for sunset we pulled up on a cable beach. This is probably the most touristic spot in the whole room. It's a super long white sandy beach, hard so you can pull up your car and you can watch the sunset while there are camels walking up and down. It's something absolutely stunning but as you can tell there are so many cars and many hates touristic places. The only reason why I was able to make him to do it with me is that I promised him a picnic in the boat and a bottle of wine. Where's Thank the bottle of wine? <laughs> Thank you for coming here with me. I absolutely <laughs> cannot stand touristic places, but look, I've had my arm twisted. So um, get the bottle of wine, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It may be a touristic thing, it may be busy as, but whilst we are in Broome, we may as well experience this stunning thing. Camels on the beach. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, bottle of wine, camera for me, bottle of wine for many. And we're gonna enjoy the sunset which is coming. Here is your bottle of wine. 
We'll start going to touristic places more often. <laughs> right. So I think we got ourselves pretty good spot and pretty good picnic set up. So you can see we got some sushi, we got some crackers and olives, veggie, olive bread, hummus. We've got it all. We have the promised bottle of wine. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and look at this spot. How good. We're having a feed in the tinny. <laughs> it makes it so much better. If you were to delete those people there, and delete those people there. Not me. <laughs> yeah, not you, but those people there. This would be incredible. No, it's still pretty beautiful, isn't it? It's awesome. Let's go, dig in. Mm. So this is what the hype is all about. <laughs> so beautiful I thought I'm gonna like it but I didn't think I'm gonna love it this much <laughs> honestly did you like it yeah it's sick it's cool like the cameras against the Sun and this picnic video oh, bushy, bushy. <laughs> also it got me all emotional it was, oh, pretty sick, but it was I don't it's know a, it is a beautiful place and it's it's just it has such a vibe to it like the sun setting and the camels and the long shadows and I would definitely recommend it as much as it's touristic I would still 100% recommend doing it and it's completely for free and look at the sun after the stunning sunset we were driving and we just pulled up at this random place I think we are near ocean and near mangroves and we just gonna prepare the car for sleeping, put the stuff away from our bed and we are going to bed because we are both pretty tired. It was a big long day and we are going tomorrow again. So I'm gonna see you in the morning. And our bed is ready. It doesn't take too long. I think we were done in like three minutes and we can go to bed, brush our teeth go sleep wake up early good morning guys we packed up the car and now we are heading north to explore the whole peninsula and it's gonna be a couple of hours on this red dirt corrugated off-road track so we are letting the tires down to make it a little bit smoother and a little bit easier for our not off-road trailer of the boat <laughs> halfway through the track and our trailer is falling apart and I have no idea what we're gonna do if this is gonna break so this broke which used to hold the boat like the very important bit of the front trailer and now we found out that there are cracks of the main part I don't know if you can see it <laughs> so good, eh? This is what adventuring is about. This is what happens when you take a city trailer into off-road tracks, I suppose. But I'm honestly getting quite nervous. We still have probably two or three weeks before we are heading to Perth. So this boat and trailer needs to survive another three weeks. And we are probably one and a half hours deep in this track. There is no turning back. I don't know. Are you gonna <laughs> fix it if something happens? Yeah, we'll be able to dodge it up or something. <laughs> oh, this is the adventure, guys. When we arrive in a new location like this, I like to put a drone in the air just to put the place in a perspective, see the surroundings, and <laughs> if we are around Broome, to look for crocodiles as well. So I'm just gonna fly the drone now and have a look how this place looks like, what's around us and I'm gonna show you what I can see. <laughs> I think we just found ourselves a spot where we're gonna camp tonight. It's unbelievable because it's still so much light. Usually we arrive at the spot where we are camping after dark. So we are just lost in the night trying to find where to sleep. Today we are taking it quite more chilled and slowlier. So it's around 3, 4 p.m. and we already have a spot we're gonna park up here and this is where we're gonna sleep tonight. 
and look at it we are surrounded by the vibrant red rocks beautiful white sandy beach and then we have the ocean right there so i'm gonna go for a walk on the beach there are some rocks in the water so i'm gonna have a look if there are some oysters maybe for dinner maybe we're gonna go for a flick with the rod let's see let's see what we're gonna do but oh my gosh i'm so happy with this place oh it's gonna be so good to wake up to right now we are near james price point which is unique with these red rocks in contrast with the white sandy beach and the blue ocean right next to it the contrast of those colors just creates the most wonderful views broome is such a beautiful part of western australia and i'm falling in love with broome more and more despite the crocodiles or maybe because the crocodiles as well because i just love taking photos and videos of wildlife i went for a beach walk just to see the rocks from every single angle possible and as well i saw some rocks in the water so i'm gonna have a look if there are some oysters so maybe we can have a little bit of a nibble on an oysters but let's see these are the rocks i was hoping could have some oysters there is absolutely nothing on those rocks but this view never gets old So this is where we are camping, this is our car. These are the beautiful red rocks. And Mary is making a bush weapon. How do you go with the oysters? There are no oysters whatsoever, not a one. You're joking. Mm. I was hell excited for oysters. Well, this thing here is gonna catch us dinner. <laughs> Actually. Yeah, it's gonna take about two days to make, but. <laughs> well, I'm excited to see it. What is it called? It's an indigenous throwing stick. Throwing stick? Mm. Yeah. It's epic. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm gonna think what we're gonna do for dinner then. <laughs> if this is gonna be in two days. I want oysters. <laughs> I know. I was hell hopeful, hey. Because there are no oysters whatsoever, I'm gonna do plan B for dinner and that's gonna be sweet potatoes in the coals. So I'm gonna try to collect some firewood and start a fire. The only thing is, look what's around, there are no trees. It's gonna be a struggle to find enough firewood, but I'm gonna try. Time has been so hard on us, my friend. and everything is dirty this is why no matter what they call it we are quite enjoying having a fire and just chilling here enjoying the evening so we decided for dinner we will just have a fish and veggie Matty caught a few days ago fish we still have a fresh fish in the fridge so we're gonna make this and the sweet potatoes i'm gonna put into the coals once the fire goes off and once the coals are not so hot so i'm gonna put them in there we're gonna go to bed and then in the morning we're gonna have already sweet potatoes from the coals for breakfast so as you can see i have a lot of coals but they are very very hot so now i just have to wait <laughs> all right so here we go she is doing her little potato cook up this is the little fire i get left with look at this fire thank you <laughs> matt ten that's much appreciated <laughs> she's put this whole entire fire out just so she can put these bloody potatoes in the fire so it's gonna be your breakfast well the thing is that right, here we go yeah <laughs> The thing is that Matty likes to go to the bed later than me and then wake up later than me when I am already ready to go to bed so I'm like I'm not waiting anymore with my potatoes so I need to put the fire down mm. but because I know Matty wants to stay awake I am keeping him this little cute What is this? That's <laughs> nothing! As soon as you go to bed I'm picking this thing back up 
Oh, don't you dare. If we're gonna in the morning end up with burnt potato, you know who to blame. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing is I'm digging a little hole in the ashes to hopefully have it not so hot. Hmm? That should be all right. I need to feel this. Oh yeah, that's pretty hot, but it's not too hot, right? And that's it. This is what you do in check. So now our potatoes are in the fire and I'm just gonna cover them with the ash and I'm gonna hope they are not gonna burn <laughs> and they're gonna be lying <laughs> in the ash for like eight, ten hours as long as we sleep. Ten hours! Yo, I hope I sleep for ten hours. <laughs> Let's see how they're gonna be in the morning, hey? Tell me what, if you pull this off, you're an absolute camp cook. <laughs> I'm very interested to see how this goes. Have you guys ever tried potatoes cooked in the ashes overnight? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. And <laughs> I reckon it will be good. Yeah, you need to cover up these little head over here. Oof. Hey, do you know what I'm thinking? What if some animal will eat it overnight? I know animal putting its head in here. It's like 200 degrees right now. <laughs> this tin's getting hot as I hold it. There you go, Master. I'm excited. Go, Master Chef. Give it hell. Okay, guys. I'm gonna... Oh, it's, it's finished. So, I'm going to bed. So, that's it. That's the final thing. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna go to bed and I'm gonna You're gonna see... sort this out for me? having my coffee on those red rocks and look at the view absolutely stunning I still haven't checked the potatoes so I don't know if they are burnt to ashes if they are raw inside how did they go I don't know yet but just to keep the suspense going a little longer I'm gonna first fly the drone have a look on those because now it's high tide so the scenery is gonna be a little bit different as well than yesterday when we arrived on a low tide We spotted a bunch of rays. I'm pretty sure they were eagle rays. I've never seen them before. So, so beautiful. But now I'm getting hungry. So I really hope that the potatoes are done and cooked and <laughs> they are buried in the ashes here. So let's dig them out and let's see if we can eat them. You reckon they're gonna be ready? I don't know. I was saying, I don't know if they are burned to ashes, if they are raw inside, who knows. <laughs> it's like digging up a fossil, eh? It's not every day you cook in ashes, hey? Oh, I can see. Look at him. Oh, it's super soft. Is it soft? Yeah. That's a good sign. And it's not burned. All right, so what's the step with these busted ass potatoes? Well, they are still quite hot. Yeah, but they're pretty soft, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They look good. Okay, I'm gonna open. Is this the moment of truth? So this side is quite hard. Uh, and then here, it's quite soft. Oh yeah, that looks hell good. Okay, should we try? Mmm. It's delicious. It's good. Mm -hmm. You want to try? Look at that. Ha! It's yummy. I want more. Mmm. That's actually pretty bloody good. Sweet potato in the ashes. That's actually pretty, actually cooked very yeah. good. I'm just gonna sprinkle it with salt. Maybe we can do one sweet with like a cinnamon coconut honey and one we can do just sprinkle with salt like a savory uh-huh so let's try to open this one. Oh, this one looks even softer look at that 
crispy, ashy skin and soft inside. So I cut up this piece. Look at the skin. It's just beautifully peeling off. This is the ashy skin. And this I'm gonna sprinkle with the Himalayan salt with some spices. And this is gonna be the perfect fire bite. Oh wow. Mm. Good with the salt, huh? Yeah, the salt and spices just gives it this little hint of even more flavor. That's the perfect camping breakfast hey. Thank you for joining me on today's video. I hope you enjoyed exploring Broome and camping with us. And I'm gonna see you in the next couple of days. Ciao!